Hi everyone, this is Rostella from Going Expert and today we have a new guest, Sally. Sally is from Manchester and she lives in Sicily and today is here to tell us a little bit more about her story, her expert experience. Um, Sally is also very, very uh, active on Instagram, so I'm going to leave the uh, Instagram uh, link uh, in the description so you can uh, have a look, reach out. I'm going to let Sally introduce herself. Hi, Rosella. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm Sally. Um, I'm from the north of England, but I've been living in Sicily for 10 years since September 2011. Um, I live in Modica in the south of Sicily. It's a, a very small town um, near the coast. I am an English teacher and translator here. I have my own business. Um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you like the reason why you moved to Sicily and then just tell us something about your Instagram account. My, my story is a bit complicated because I've actually moved around quite a lot. Um, in, in my 20s, um, I worked in entertainment and travel and I lived in Paris, in Greece for three years, Finland, Spain. So I moved around a lot. <laughs> Tried to move back to England and settle down and have a normal life, <laughs> but it just wasn't <laughs> for me. I love the sunshine. I love the Mediterranean. I, I was working in a primary school in England. Um, I was also DJ. My, my story is very mixed up. Um, <laughs> and I was trying to think how I can move back to the Mediterranean, but have a more steady life mm -hmm. than I had had before so I retrained to be an English teacher I, I wasn't specifically looking to come to Sicily my idea was the Mediterranean as a okay partner. and the first job I was offered was here in Modica and the rest is history <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, I've moved around a lot um had a lot of different experiences and my career has enormously changed over the years as well mm -hmm. I guess that's where Instagram comes in because um I obviously I was a DJ and I was working in entertainment and I studied theatre I worked in theatre so I guess Instagram gives me the opportunity to be creative in some way which is, is really important to me yes this is gonna make everyone very very curious to see what you share <laughs> so again, the, the link or your account is going to be in the description and uh, we can reach out, uh, participate to your Sally Saturday about your move to Sicily. That's actually, I guess this is a big curiosity that people have. Me too, because uh, again, we are very used to uh, think about Sicilian people like myself moving somewhere else to find a different life. Really, very nice to see how uh, this place can be home from someone else so I really I really enjoy to talk to you about it um I, everyone that follow me know that I still love my my Sicily anyway so Sicilian is a very proud Sicilian yeah I, <laughs> people from islands also are very very attached what's the big what was the bigger challenge for you moving moving there from Manchester so and going around as you say you are a kind of serial expert so <laughs> yes um i think the the challenges and the difficulties have actually changed over the years i would say when when i first came here the the, the first big challenge was the language because i didn't speak italian when i arrived wow. <laughs> so, so that was a huge challenge um obviously now after 10 years i do speak italian but I think there are some things that I, I still find challenging. And I, I often say, if you live here, you have to fight for everything. That is challenging when you're from a culture where things just get done. Um, so if, if I had to go to Comune, the, the town hall, the anxiety that, yes. that you have <laughs> inside before going to do these official things, going to the bank, going to the post office, um, even after 10 years here, it, it still is a challenge because it, it feels like a battle. To do. 
I guess that I can tell you that even if you are born here, <laughs> you will never get used because it's it's kind of uh, long and sometimes difficult. There are so many people, so many offices. Bureaucracy is very long, so it doesn't doesn't really help. But you say, and was one of the questions that I, of course, um, I prepared for you. The first challenge was the language because you didn't speak any Italian back in the in the days. How important it is to speak Italian in Sicily? Is in Italy in general, I would say. And what are your tips to to learn if you are coming from another country? So if you are an expert, you. I mean, the thing is, you have to learn. Um, I, I think having lived in other European countries I, I took for granted the the use of the English because when I lived in Greece when I lived in France people spoke English so it was a shock when I came here how few people speak English or at least how few people speak English at any sort of proficient level um, we have something that's called scholastic English here in, in Italy which means you don't speak English you can say the pen is on the table and, and not much else. So that, that was a shock. I knew that I was coming here for about three months before I actually arrived. And I had a CD in my car that, that was Italian language that actually now my mom uses. Um, and you know, it, you just repeat, buongiorno, come stai? Yes. And um, very simple. So, you know, I had th that. Um, then I had private lessons um, the, the, mm. in the first years that I was living at here. I worked in a school before I started my own business and the school were able to provide me with a teacher. Okay. One lesson. And, and I would say that was really important to, to have the, the grammatical base and understanding mm. of the language. I, I don't... I don't think I could have got anywhere if I hadn't had someone to, to give me the instructions because the grammatical structure is, is very different to that of English. Yeah. And, and actually much more complicated. Um, you know, I was shocked at how many articles there are in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> what? I had to think about masculine, feminine, plural. Yes, oh, you just said two. It's easy for you, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> And then I would say the, the biggest teacher for me was having an Italian boyfriend for, for yeah. a lot of the time. Um, we're not together anymore, but you know, when, when you have to argue with your boyfriend in another language, you very quickly learn how to say what you want to say. <laughs> okay, so everyone that wants to move to Italy and to see, see just get a partner from here. How long, how long did you take you to uh, be fluent in Italian? Fluent is a very complicated word. I would say after a couple of years, I felt confident to have conversations and, you know, not just order a pizza or something like that, but actually participate in, um, in a real conversation. Uh, Probably it's more like five, six years later that mm. you feel that you can really express yourself in that mm. language and feel confident in what you're saying. That, you know, even 10 years later, I still don't feel that I can express myself in Italian in the way that I can in English. I feel very proficient in Italian and I feel very capable yeah. I don't feel like I explain my ideas in quite the same way as I could in English. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I understand, of course. And I guess even more if we're talking about our feeling and emotion, it's always very, very hard to feel yeah, fluent, comfortable in a different language than now. Another difficulty here is not everyone speaks Italian as, as well. You know, yes. some, sometimes I meet people and and they can't speak Italian. They they speak the local language, um, and th that's completely different. And yeah. 
I can um, understand something mm. of the local dialect. For me, it's impossible to, to speak. It's also true that in a small uh, town or in the villages in Sicily, it's very, very common to speak dialect more than in the bigger cities. I mean, everyone does speak dialect, but everyone speaks Italian too. Modica is a great example of that. People tend to speak the uh, dialect all the time between each other, even if they are able to speak Italian, of course. But maybe the older people, they, they don't. They have always speak. Uh, spoke dialect. That's true. Yeah, I mean this this area of the province of Ragusa, a, a lot of older people. You're you're very right, but all, also a lot of people here work in agriculture. Yeah, they're perhaps not so well educated. So e even people my age and and yeah. younger, some of them don't speak Italian. Yeah. Yeah, true, true. That's that's a big reality in uh, in, in Sicily too. What the the thing that you like most in Sicily and the least, let's say. <laughs> the, the thing that I like the most, I would say, is the climate. Um, I suffer quite um, a lot with my mental health in in the winter mm. months. Um, so the fact that there is a shorter winter here is really good for me and and my mental health. Um, I love the sea. I, I, it, even in the winter, I swim. You know, all, all of this is, is basically a lifestyle thing. The possibility to spend more time outside. Yeah. Um, I, I have a great big balcony here, and the doors are always open. I, I want that fresh air, and I, I've never had that growing up because you know, in the north of England, even in August, it can be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that that that's the most important thing to me, and 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 that's why I'm here. Um, and the thing that I like the least really is what I was talking about before mm. the, the bureaucracy and the battles. There's a guy in the bank who's always been rude to me, and mm. I've always been very very polite and okay, thank you very much. And <laughs> the the last time I think he just caught me on a bad day. And I said, are you rude to everyone or is it because I'm, I'm, I'm sorry? <laughs> and then he changed and then he was completely different. You have to assert yourself to be respected. And mm. as a British person, it's the opposite. <laughs> if, if you're very polite and calm, then you gain more respect. It's funny for me to hear all this kind of thing because for me it's quite the opposite, you know. I'm from Sicily, I went to the north of Europe, so I basically had to switch like you're all you. <laughs> Don't need to go there and post myself, I can just ask and things that happen. So, and that's that's one of the big difference between uh, Sicily and, and Manchester or UK in general. What other big difference have you noticed and what do you miss the most of your native country, if you do miss something? I mean, the, the thing that comes to mind immediately when you say what do you miss is obviously friends and family, um, and you know, that that's really hard. And I, I think obviously these last two years of pandemic has mm. really put a spotlight on, on that because we haven't been able to travel so freely as, as we did in the past. I, I miss the, I, I mean, Modica is a, a small town. I guess if I lived in Palermo or Catania, the situation might be different. But I miss the, the, the sort of nightlife and events that happen um, in, in Manchester, in the UK in general. I miss going to concerts. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I miss going to exhibitions. But they, they just don't happen here. But I think, I think it's because it's a small town. The differences between Sicily... I mean, I, I, would, I would say I think friendships are not so strong here as, as they are for British people. Um, mm. I, I think there's a, a strong connection of family here, which is great. But I, I, I think people don't have strong friendships like, like they do in the UK. That, that's been mm. my experience with people here, but also what, what I see with, with other people, with my students. And, you know, I, I teach a lot of um, teenage girls, that, well, teenagers in general, but so, so many teenage girls will say, oh, my, my boyfriend went off with my best friend. And I think that was oh, yeah. never <laughs> That would never happen. So I, I think okay. the idea of friendship is different. And now I understand what you're saying. Oh, curious. I mean, I guess this is the least 
uh, answer everyone everybody was expecting probably you know about friendship Sicily you know social relationship but it's a different way to see to see friendship very interesting and uh, talking about friends and family wh what people say about you moving to Sicily well I mean I I have to that one of the first things that people say to you is but the, the mafia the mafia oh my and, god and, you know, that's that that's that's an instant thing that people say and um, you know that I heard I heard when I said I was moving to Sicily that that was the word and and then I, I hadn't even thought a bit about it I've never met any members of the mafia <laughs> thank you there. for saying so, so. <laughs> <laughs> um my my dad I remember saying um you do know there's a great big volcano on the island oh yeah you? right <laughs> There's, there, there were a lot of warnings, but since I've been here, I mean, obviously outside of times of pandemic, I generally have a really steady flow of visitors. I think my friends and family are quite happy that they have this little um, escape to, to the med that they can have. And, you know, some of my friends come every year. Uh, I mean, the, the thing is, it it's very beautiful it's very simple life here you eat well the climate is good the cost of living is very low and and the, the cost of being a tourist here is very low you yeah. know if you if you go out here in Modica for a pizza and a couple of beers you'll spend 20 euros you know there's wow. no way you could go out in Manchester for 20 yeah. years to get a taxi I just would like to uh, stress what you told me before we start to record that is there is a community of experts over there but yeah I mean through, throughout Sicily that there are expats here, here in Modica there are quite a few expats um Pol there's a few Polish people here mm -hmm. and two, two of my good friends here are Polish but there are quite a lot of British and Americans here in Modica as well they they tend to be older people who maybe have retired here okay it's it's surprising how many um foreign people I mean I wouldn't say by any stretch of the imagination it's a multicultural international community here in Modica <laughs> it's definitely not no. <laughs> um, but that you know there are a few expats around a great place to live if you're British or American living on a pension the cost of living here is so much lower than in UK or, or the United States I mean here in in Modica specifically if, if we're talking about elsewhere in Italy it's a different story yeah. but, but they can easily still a very good life yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, but the island in general is still cheap compared also to other region in uh, in Italy. I mean, if we compare the north and the south, specific, of course. it's completely different. Well, Sally, I want to thank you for this uh, for this time and for telling us a little bit about your experience. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you, and thank you everyone for watching. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Ciao.